Welcome back, welcome back. You're listening to Rhythm FM coming to you live from Kingston, Jamaica. And of course, I have a very special guest for my next feature coming up right. Yes, the workplace. So you continue to stay with us. We're putting in every day. You got me working, working, and we're pushing it in every way. And who do I have in front of me? Yes. Patricia Reed War, how you do? I am fine, thank you, and good morning to your listeners. Great to have you. <laughs> no, give your trouble, you're not gonna like me after this. Why you won't show your age? <laughs> eh? And listeners, I must tell you, she taught me at the University of the West Indies, and let me tell you something, she looked like why you keep fit and look good and beautiful smile, same way. How you doing? I am doing fine. All of my seventy four years, almost seventy five. Yes. <laughs> It is unbelievable. And it's, it is your ability to have fun and to laugh, you know, which is... And by the way, listeners, for those who she taught at the University of the West Indies, I don't know about her. Um, she, 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 she has quite a number of skills. So tell us about that. Because many persons don't know that you, you play the organ. Well, I, I think I have lived a very colorful life. Very colorful life. Very colorful <laughs> life. Uh, I, I, well, let me start first. Yes. Um, I taught at Calabar. When I left university, I taught at Calabar. So I have a whole cohort of men and women, of men who are now shaking this world, ruling this, this country. That must be a wonderful and, feeling. And, and they are my students. You're, you're going to have to mention <laughs> some of them. I'm sure they were feeling quite nice that you're mentioning that some of them. Like, give it some. John Bassey, for instance, yeah. attorney John Bassey. Uh, you have B B William Aiken, Dr. William Aiken. Oh, yes, the I had to deal with him, William Aiken, the yes. Esteemed um, urologist. He, but, no, he's a professor. I think he's a professor. He's, no? he's now a professor. Yes. So hold on. This little part where I mean, oh, so like I should be here. And then the people that you teach, but you're not easy. Of course, of course. And there, there are so many more. Walter Scott, uh, King's Council. Yes. I, I could go on. That's one of the beautiful thing, things about teaching. Really fantastic. And now you have retired, and I disagree with you retiring. But you don't retire. <laughs> yeah. No, not at all. Because for me, yes. retirement is, is not going into a departure lounge and sitting on and waiting to die. Retirement is putting on new tires on your life and hitting the road again. And that is precisely what I have done. But here what? You used to play the organ, and you are at the stage of your life. I understand that you're learning to play another instrument. Which instrument is that? Well, I, I, I learned to play the violin, yes. and I also learned to play the steel band. So I, I'm now playing in the, the um, Church of the Transfiguration Steel Orchestra. I'm a bona fide member of that orchestra. What a thing. What a thing. <laughs> you want to see me a play pan? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you're not only playing pan, but you're dancing up a storm too. Dancing up a storm too, enjoying it tremendously. Yeah. And the good thing about that, you know, is that the the orchestra is made up of young kids going to school right, right up to adults, right up to persons uh, my age. Uh, mm. We actually have uh, uh, somebody in the band who is older than me also. So it, it, it just gives you an opportunity to really interact with, with, with the youth. And this is what keeps you young at heart. Oh, I see. And that is not happening enough nowadays. Um, it's not happening. For one, I'm sure you have a lot to share with the young people. And uh, you can also learn from them. Yes, it's a it's a it's a mutual yes. mutually benefic beneficial beneficial uh, you know relationship mm. between the young and the old, and you have to remember you know when you get to my age, all the people that you have been growing up with they are all dropping dead and leaving leaving you there, and if your friends are only the ones in your age group, then you when you have a problem. when you, you have, have a problem. get to the 70, 74, 75 year, yes. years old, you, you you're gonna be losing people in your life and there is no no nobody replacing them. So you have to start thinking about having friends from you know the, the, the young ones in your communities, in your neighborhoods, befriend them, talk to them. 
No customer for no young and indiscipline. Exactly, exactly. That that's what you have to do. And I mean, I I have an awesome relationship with the the, the young people in my my complex. They, they must feel important because they, they normally see those who are above the age in in one corner and they are in the other corner. Yes, uh, typically. But you see, w- what you have to do, you cannot, you can't come down on them. Yes, uh, yes. And you can't be miserable, right? Because I remember when I was young, there were, were people I had to stay away from. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> the I, when I was afraid. I was afraid. We had a lady at church, right? That um, she was slim like this, and we call her fatty. <laughs> when, when fatty, when I see fatty, we young people see fatty coming this way. We all bolt and go, go the other way. way because you know she's gonna call you down about something. She so you know we really have to take a different approach to 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 the young people. Mm-hmm. But it's not only good for them; it's also good for you. And by the way, if you are listening, I hope you are learning from Patricia Reedwall. What she's sharing sharing with you is that rather than leave the people them work. And lock off of the whole world, and after them dead and gone, and she account much minutes she have on the world, uh, uh, on the world here. She's reaching out to the young people. So guess what? You better follow back on her. Yes, tell me more about that. Though. And how are you in the music going? Are you having a next show? <laughs> well, uh, we uh, the steel band, of course, will play for church during right. uh, during uh, Easter mm-hmm. and uh, Good Friday. And I, I, I should be playing with them on Good Friday, but on Easter Sunday I won't be able to because I have to play for play the organ mm-hmm. for another service. So uh, you know I do do that too. I that play the organ. And except at your age, you, 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 I guess you can't show off because you look like you're about forty or so. Um, playing the organ is not a very common skill these days. I'm sure the churches are having a challenge in terms of getting organists. The churches are having a serious challenge with getting getting organists. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we really need uh, need more young you know, people. You know, I used to play too. Really? <laughs> I didn't know that. Yes, I used to play the organ and the piano. But uh, my skills don't. Uh, dust and, uh, no, but you can get yourself a, a little keyboard. Um, when, when you're celebrating your 70th birthday, uh, get somebody to give you a keyboard for your 70th birthday and you start um, amusing yourself. Uh, yes, yes, yes. You'll be surprised to know, you know, you it will come back to you. And you can learn it at any, at any age. You can learn it mm-hmm. at any age because I started the violin when, when I was like 60, 64. That's when I started learning the violin. The steel, steel band, um, I started learning it when I was like 79, 69, 69, I think. That's what when I, think? I started learning to play the pan. But I'll tell you about a better than you now. <laughs> She work hard and send her daughter to school. Her daughter turned big doctor, you know, making her name in the United States. And at the age of uh, 90-something, she went back to school and she got her associate degree at the age of 96. Precisely, precisely. And she's going to come here and hope she God give her a long life. She's going to come and visit Jamaica. And I'm proud to tell you, it is on this program that it, her name was first mentioned and she made world news, yes, but right here, Violet Edwards, 96, okay, got okay. her associate degree. Oh, I think I, yes, I, I did read, read about that. Yeah, man, so. I did read about that. And she has inspired me. Well, you inspired me for a long time. Well, that is why you are here. Now, listeners, I hope if you are young, you don't tell yourself, say, you're not going to get old. Mm-hmm. You remember, so that time they said, little hog, they look for big hog and say, why you snow so long? And big hog say, only time will tell. So you must listen to and learn. And we have been learning from you that the older you get, as you said before, that those who are close to you in terms of age, they will depart after a while. Therefore, you have to reach out to the younger folks to so keep in touch with them. No, I know another thing that one needs to do. How do you equip yourself? Well, psychologically, you have to equip yourself. You know, you got into different instruments and so on. But and, um, tell me more, how can you equip yourself so that you, you can still function and cope? Well, interestingly, yeah. I never thought about retirement at all before I, I actually came out of most, the, most the regular. Process. Just never thought about it. Mm-hmm. Nobody had ever talk to me about retirement. So I was just busily um, going, merrily going along. But I along. want to tell you something. You're the first person, I don't say probably other persons don't talk about it, either, but you're the first person to give that, give it a public 
image. Well, this is why yeah. this is it is because of my experience right. why I realized that somebody needs to be out there talking about it mm -hmm. because my it was actually illness that took me out of the the regular working world. Right, and that's what take out many of us. And and I never I I never planned for retirement right. in in any way whatsoever. And guess so what? If you think so, you know, plan. Just think of how many persons out there who do not have a pension plan. Exactly. Oh. Because had I known, yes. had I known that that was going to be my lot, I <laughs> would have been planning planning for it from, from a long time before. Yes, yes. So I was actually caught uh, flat-footed. But the, the excellent thing is that I have a lot of skills. Right. And this is another message that I want um, people, people who are, you know, like our 60-year-olds and mm -hmm. all that, don't panic, right? Okay? Uh, yes, I want the younger ones to, to really start planning. But for the 60-year-olds, the 15, 59, 60, don't start to panic. Start to look at all of the skills and competencies you have you have um, acquired yes. over the years and what you're going to find out is that they can work for you you will be able to to um do things even some of the hobbies that you you have you can turn them into income generating well, activities could, could i give you a joke go ahead you see what i'm doing now <laughs> It was a, it I, was a I, hobby. I will be there. You know, when I was at UTEC, for example, there was another bright fellow. I don't know how he did it, but he learned how to build a transmitter. Now, I'm sure it was illegal for him to do, but he used a whole way other things, put it together. And on the campus, we had our little station. So I started to catch my little practice there. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, yes. and and at that time right. it was it was all fun. It was all fun, and and look at what what it's doing for mm -hmm. you you know, yeah. and this is what people have to realize. I I want you to start thinking, digging mm. deep. Think about all the things you have done over your life, all the competencies, all the hobbies, all the interests you have had, and you can still be able to make something. But you know what happened to many of us, though, Pat. For those who are just joining me, I'm talking with um, Patricia Reed War, a lady who has retired. But if you look at her, um, you're going to say, I like Seattle. And uh, yeah, she said she didn't plan for it. But although she never planned for it, you know, we can have what is likes about, you know, she have our book, Retirement, The Journey and the Destination. So if you never, uh, you ever know, look like for me, I'm going to say, a book, books. She have another one, Retirement, A New Adventure. So although. She didn't plan for it. She's sharing her information so that you can plan for it now. Now, many of us, when we have that job, we're working hard. We are dedicated to that job. And especially in the educational system now, especially with all the, um, the shift system, youngsters are just swatting, learning the facts to regurgitate it. I know you have a, a new thing. We forget what they call it. What they call it? Chat GPT. You know, you have to <laughs> think again. Youngsters are not being exposed to other extracurricular activities which they can draw on in their retirement years. And that's a real problem these days. That, I find, is the sad, saddest part of the mm. school experience. Because you, you find all these children, every single day, they're going to extra classes. They're gonna going so so they finish school, then they go into extra classes when they really should be doing uh, extracurricular activities, building up their their their, their competencies in in terms Other of areas. in terms of you know their soft skills, uh, their their development, their general development, and just really. They, they should just be enjoying that other other aspect of life. No, if you're not on the on the football team, you're not playing football. You and and that's not how that's, not good, that's not good at all. And even if you're on the football team, even if you're a track star, if you don't become a national star, that's the end of you when you leave school. Right. And and you have um people who are who, who might have started music. By the time they reach third form, they have to drop music because they're going to going to extra classes. Nonsense. It is nonsense. Nonsense. This is why we need you to be talking out more. Yeah. I, I'll tell you something. Yes. In my day, when you went to extra classes, it was because you were considered 
not so bright. Right. Right. In this day, it's almost like a fad. Everybody, yeah, it's to almost extra like a fad. You know, they should be going to extracurricular activities. Yes, yes. Building up, going to clubs and, um, you know, the, the, the clubs in, different clubs in the, in the school. Mm -hmm. Building up their social skills, their leadership oh, skills. Don't, don't, don't mention the social skills. That is gone. That's a lacking. Yeah, yeah. I, I must tell you something. Um, uh, you'll be surprised to know. I don't think I've used even 10% of what I've been taught at neither high school. Yeah, I can't say that because I, you yeah. use it. So. But, um, you know, I, I, and my listeners are going to hear this for the first time. Uh, I did straight accounting at the University of the West Indies. I don't think I worked in the field for one year. It is the other things that I've done, the theater, the music, that is what is carrying me now. So this whole idea, you must do work, you know, do your school work is important. But this whole idea that that is all there is in life. As a matter of fact, the Pitney Barney, you know, they might pressure them. Come and entrance them. As a matter of fact, the children put so much stress on the poor Pitney them. It's amazing. Yeah, the fetus is registered in in um <laughs> <laughs> in prep school. I'm laughing, but it's a serious thing. The, the, the fetus yes. is registered in prep school. prep school. Can you imagine? It's unbelievable. And then now, when you have all these extracurricular skills, you are better able to enjoy life. Let me tell you another one about me, you know? Because I am learning from you. No, me didn't think I'm a writer. No. And when me did Knox, me didn't think about me, I put up my little magazine. And to me, it was fun. Now, I bought me a writer, blog, and whole of people. I read it back, you know. I'm learning from others who give me guidance and help me. I said, Vernon, watch the grammar there, do that there, make your headlines, that kind of a thing. But I can now help you to preach the word. Well, interesting. Yes. Interestingly, uh, when I, like even when I was working, yes. we used to, I used to write, uh, write little poems for the office, like if somebody is, is retiring yes. or, or um, just, there was a magazine, a, a newsletter that I used to put out at Deloitte and Touche when I worked there. At the accounting firm, yeah. Yes, mm. I, I did the, the um, newsletter, the monthly newsletter, and all of that I used to do. When, when I used to be at Calabar, I used to write poems for the staff, you know, when we're having staff functions. Right, and, right. And it was all fun. When I went to Nevis, uh, Saint, uh, work in St. Martin and Nevis, and you, you know these small islands, you yeah. don't have much to do. So, of course, uh, I, I used to write things for the church, mm. write, write uh, skits and, and all, all of that. And would you believe that that is what has helped me not only to write these two books, mm -hmm. but also since, since um, I, I came back, I have entered JCDC. And I get medals too. And, and getting medals in JCDC uh, creative writing competition. One year I entered a speech competition and got gold medal. And um, one, one of my poems that I got a silver medal for mm. is in the Miss Lou, that Miss Lou anthology, that historic anthology that was published last year, 100 plus voices for Miss Lou, yes. that published by the University of You don't have Press. a copy of her book that she has signed, I can find it, you know. I, well, well, I have. You know what? We have about two minutes left. And I don't know if you're not prepared for this, but I just picked up a thing that I'm going to just ask you just to read that. That's one. I hope it's not too long. We only have a minute before we go for the break. It's a, a, just a paragraph of your book. Or you have something that you, you are prepared to just to read. Well, let, let me read this. Yes. Most of us expect to retire at some point unless we drop dead on your job. It is inevitable. There are many different retirement styles and strategies based on factors including age, physical and geographic circumstances, mental outlook and personal goals. If you gather a random group of retirees and conduct interviews with each person, you will find that their retirement stories are as diverse as instruments in an orchestra. This diversity begins with the different factors triggering their retirements and the different levels of preparation they, they achieved. Well, all I will say, those who have ears to hear, let them hear. things. You were dead on the job, oh yes, before you left. And then, when you leave the job, you have nothing to enjoy. So, make sure that you participate in all these extracurricular activities. I'm begging all little teachers out there, the principals, the minister of education, I beg you, many people them out sometime to have fun. Because that fun they have now will come in quite handy when they are retired.
Yes, it will. All right, going to go for the break right now. Um, we'll take the break. It's now uh, 11.45. What an interesting conversation with Patricia Reed War, who, because of her involvement, she still looks like she doesn't get out. She still looks like a yo. Hello, you're looking at somebody. Don't look like a big, a big, a, a bigger one for you. Out of order. <laughs> All right, going to go for the break. Soon come back. Don't move. You got me working, working, and we put.